Congratulations, you've just built your first website. Before we get carried away though, it's likely your client will have a few hopefully minor edits for you. This is natural, it's part of the process. Here's the thing though, many if not all clients will try to tell you what is best for their website even though they're not a designer and don't know best practices and usually have bad taste. Not all feedback is bad feedback though, unless it's this. Comic Sans is not coming back, <laughs> unless AIM is. Usually you just have to train your clients on how to provide effective feedback. So let me show you the difference between effective feedback and prescriptive feedback as detailed by Paul Jarvis. Good feedback. I'm afraid visitors won't know what site they're on. The word poor doesn't feel like the right tone for my brand. The shade of blue in that icon doesn't feel vibrant enough for the visual language of my business. Bad feedback. Make the logo bigger. Change the word poor to bad. Draw that icon using this color code instead of this color code. And the above is feedback on the right is bad because it's telling you what to do, not what they think the problem is. You're the expert, so you find the solution. They're the client, so they tell you the problem. Teach clients how to give good feedback. Be honest. If you don't like something, I need to know now, not three weeks down the road. Be specific. Point out exactly what is not working for you and why it's not working. Ask why. If you aren't sure what, what I was thinking, I'd love to explain my reasoning. Everything I've done for the project has a purpose. Refer to your goals. Relate every piece of criticism back to your goals. Relate to your audience. Your audience should be top of mind for every decision or critique that you provide. What do they need? What will they love? Teach clients what bad feedback looks like. Do, work, do my work for me. Please give me written or verbal instructions about what isn't working. Don't redo my work to illustrate your point. Prescribe fixes. You're paying me to provide solutions. Explain the problem and I'll pitch potential fixes to you based on my research experience and skills. Involve everyone you know in the creative process. I work best when you alone serve as an expert on your company and audience. Art made by committee is rarely successful. Fuck. Designed by committee. I fucking hate that shit. Take things personally. If I miss the mark, we need to figure out why and move closer to our mutual target. If I disagree with you, it's because I'm thinking about your goals and your audience. It's not personal. It's business. How to combat bad requests. Always propose a better or alternative solution to requests. Offer solid reasons why you feel their request is misguided. Empathize and be sincere. Ask questions to dig deeper. Brainstorm a better solution. Clarify. Politely reiterate you're the expert and focus on what you can do. Last but not least, if you don't understand their feedback, keep asking questions until you do. It's your job as the designer to figure out what your client is saying. It's time to email this baby back to your client now and get some good feedback. Iterate, edit, and push back as needed. Once that's done, you can make the site live. All you have to do once you're done editing is change the domain name by going to your WordPress dashboard and clicking the change domain hyperlink in the alert box at the top of your back end. Make sure you take screenshots or video recordings of the site ASAP. I can promise you that clients will try to mess up your design um, or sites could be taken offline. Uh, no matter what, you'll always have proof of the beautiful website you made if you do this right away. Place them in a safe, organized place for later use. Conduct an exit interview. Don't just jump into asking for a testimonial. Conduct an exit interview to ensure the client is happy before you ask them to give you this rave review. Genuinely ask your client for honest feedback because you want to make them happy and improve your work for new customers. Paul recommends asking the following questions. Did my work meet or exceed your expectations? Did the proposal accurately reflect what I provided for you? Why or why not? What did you learn from working with me that you didn't know before this project? What was your favorite part of the project? Would you hire me again in the future? What was your least favorite part of the project? Would you be willing to provide a testimonial or a short blurb that speaks to the work I provided? If so, can you write out the quantifiable value or results of my services? Do you know anyone else who might be interested in hiring or working with me? You can send these via email or create a Google form and email the links to the form to your client. Record this information in a Google Doc or spreadsheet so you have it and can improve. Get a short blurb. Notice I didn't say testimonial. Once you know that the client is happy with your work, ask for a short blurb. When do you do this though? Well, you can do it shortly after they happily answer your questions and or you could follow up a few months later. 
I'd do both, but definitely go with the former first because you're just starting out and you need to get testimonials under your belt ASAP. The later is a good option for an established freelancer because they can afford to wait and you'll usually get better testimonials this way because you'll be able to see some quantitative results directly attributed to the website you designed. Make it easy for your client. Don't call it a testimonial. Call it something like a short blurb so it sounds easier to do. And if they're struggling to write it, tell them you're happy to help and wouldn't mind drafting it for them. Three types of testimonials. Before and after, the changes your client experienced from your work. Results, the quantifiable results they achieve from your work. And value, the unexpected value they receive from your work. It's good to collect these testimonials in one place so you have them when you need them. And I usually like to ask clients on LinkedIn for a testimonial because then I can just copy and paste that testimonial onto my website and then I also have it on my LinkedIn, whereas you can't just paste something into LinkedIn recommendations. And again, there's good blurbs and there's bad blurbs. <laughs> a bad blurb is, Lauren is the best WordPress designer ever. That's so shallow and lame. <laughs> it's like, no one's going to care. Why is she the best WordPress designer ever? Here's a good one. Lauren came to this position with so many ideas and enthusiasm that I just let her do her thing, and I often found myself learning something new from her. I highly recommend Lauren for any new endeavor as she is more like an energetic entrepreneur who can build your business. That's a good one because it explains um, why he's recommending me and what I did to earn that. Yay! We are done with section one. Um, now we're going to move on to marketing. So you may want to upsell your current client or your former client once they're happy with you on your marketing services, which you'll learn how to do in the first lesson of the next section, which is the content marketing section. Can't wait. See you there. Bye.